Hi Flosstube and Instagram friends, this is Kim and this is my 10th Flosstube video. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a fair bit to share with you again today. I have two finishes, a new start, progress on one of my whips, a stitch along to remind you about that we're going to be starting in a couple of days on February 14th and um, some floss tube and Instagram friends, uh, just some generals to teach it that. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, you'll notice I'm not in my craft room today. I'm actually sitting in front of my buffet. I did do that very short video clip about the uh, decor that I have out for Valentine's Day. So that would include the buffet that I'm sitting in front of and then my hutch that's off to the side. Um, if you'd like to go and see more about what I have around me. And I, and I, I think I try to talk about everything that you see. Um, okay, so that's how I found this first uh, floss tube channel, Stitching in the Valley, which uh, Deb and Lori. So Lori had commented on the Valentine's Decor video, and I thought, Stitching in the Valley, that sounds like a floss tube channel. And sure enough, it was. So I found their, uh, the most recent video is where I started, and I was ready to subscribe within the first couple of minutes. Um, the rapport that they have with each other, um, just they're lovely. And then Deb showed that she was stitching this, um, it's a Vervaco kit. I don't think that there's a name, um, but I got this at Hobby Lobby. I've seen it there, you know, since, but I started this back in probably 2017. It was one of, one of the first pieces I was enabled by uh, Vanna, the Twisted Stitcher, when I saw her stitching it. Uh, I, I went and, and found it. I may have even ordered it from one, two, three stitch because I do believe it's available there. But um, so it stitched on the Ada that came in the kit, which I'm not sure if it's 16 or 14, I don't remember. And with the, the flosses, which I think were just DMC flosses, but um, there was a lot of confetti in the crown area and I did, I did find myself struggling to uh, keep track of all the different browns and not get too lost. But it's one of our favorite pieces. It hangs in our uh, family area and so we enjoy it every day. And um, when we have like marriage Bible study over at our home or um, just fellowship, you know, people over for dinner or such, uh, this is often a piece that people will, will get up close and, and, and look at it and, and thinking it's just a picture and not realizing that it's cross stitch. So, so that's fun. So I really hope that, oh, and then when I was watching back from the beginning <clears throat> of Deb and Lori, I think it was like the second or third video, they gave me a shout out and I, I never even knew. And this was a couple of months ago. So thank you so much. Um, I really hope that you'll go over there and check out their channel if you are already not subscribed and uh, I know that you will enjoy them. So then here's Emily. Hi, Emily, over at Doodle and String. And Emily has commented on my videos uh, more than once and said at one point she said that she had a floss tube channel as well. And I went over there to say hi and subscribe. Um, now, Emily's going to need some encouragement because she just started her first Haid. And it's one of those uh, really large bookshelf pieces. So I think that will be a, a bit of a journey. Um, uh, Emily does a lot of crocheting as well. And so if you do go over there, please just make sure you tell her I said hi. And then here we have Eva, a mom and her car. And Eva, I think, just popped up in my feed as someone I might want to go watch. And oh my gosh, I thoroughly enjoyed Eva's channel. She only has two videos out, so plenty of time to binge watch and catch up. Um, now, Eva mentioned in one of her first videos, I think it was the first one, that she was starting Floss Tube as a way of having some accountability to finish some of the things that she started. I think she's a relatively new cross stitcher. Um, she's done a couple of monthly series. There are two cottages of the month, and so she's doing them monthly, and so, so adorable. I just, I'm Oh, if there were more time, if there were more time, Eva, I would be on board with you. Um, she's doing a couple of the fat quarter shop sales and she loves to do these little uh, graphs like pie charts or graphs um, that show the progress um, on her stitching, which is fun. I, I don't track my stitching in the way of uh, counting stitches or keeping track of the hours that I stitch, um, but I really enjoy watching others who do. So... Um, I think that, yeah, so please go over and say hi to Eva. Tell her I said hi. Uh, this next one is, I've been watching my friend Amy. Hi, Amy, Mrs. Flossie from the very beginning of her channel. 
and um, I have mentioned her several times before. I told uh, I told her we did a, a Zoom meeting earlier in the week, and it was so much fun. Um, and I had told her then that you know I don't even care that she has much stitching to show me every time. I just enjoy her. I enjoy visiting with her. She redid her craft room, and it's just, it's all the pinks and the beautiful. Um, I think it's like an aqua blue or maybe a Tiffany blue, and it's just it's a pretty blue and. Um, Amy is lovely, and and she actually just started working at the attic not too long ago. So I love hearing her talk about that. Um, so if you're not already following Amy, uh, please go tell her I said hi. And then I mentioned Jennifer at Stitching with the Waves last time when we talked about uh, stitching one over one. And I have since been really trying to catch up with Jennifer. And um, she has, I'm only on like, I think I just got to the beginning of 2020, but she does a lot of that tiny stitching, the over one stitching. And, um, it, you know, the petite point, she has a Victorian um, mini miniature house that she shows all the rooms that they're decorated with furniture, but she's going to be making things like pillows, the little tiny to scale, you know, so I think it's at one twelfth. I think is the scale, but so she's stitching the little tiny petite point uh, pillows, the tassels, the little bolster pillows. Oh my gosh. And she's going to put um, like rugs and I'm sure she'll hang things on the walls. And she's so, it's just, oh, I, and then she also has a printer's tray and she's filling that up with, you know, uh, I think she's doing a lot of alphabets, letters in the alphabet to finish up and, and other little, little spools and all kinds of fun things. And then she also did the little mini spools where she did the little banding and she showed how she did that. Um, so if you want to go enjoy all of that little, uh, petite stitching, Jennifer does a lot, a lot of just beautiful projects. It's very elegant and dainty and uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So the other thing that Jennifer mentioned uh, when we were talking, I had mentioned she had a tutorial for Petite Point and we were talking about stitching one over one and she commented that there is a silk sewing thread called Guterman. I hope you can read that, G-U-T-E-R-M-A-N-N, -N, Guterman Silk Sewing Thread. And she got some at Joann's um, but I think she mentioned there were also some online stores that you could get it at. And so that was a really, a very fine thread, a silk thread. And she said it was perfect for stitching one over one on 40 count and also for like maybe some back stitching details. She stitches from that, is that Anjanji, Veronique Anjanji, Anjanji? <laughs> it's that Christmas, she has more than Christmas book, but she's stitching from that book. It's, you know, uh, Misty at Luminous Fiber Arts. Hey Misty, she stitches some things from that book as well. And they're just those really, they're, they're just beautiful. So I'm, I'm curious to try the Guterman thread and see how that works. And then that reminded me of my friend Vicky on Instagram. Hi Vicky, stitching Vicky. She has that uh, cubby, uh, you know, display and she changes it out every month for the different or maybe the different seasons. I think she does every month. And so she has a lot of the tiny stitches that I've, I really enjoy watching her cubby display um, every month. And then I just wanted to say a personal uh, thank you to Beth, who um, she knows, she knows who she is, uh, Beth, and just the beautiful, uh, just, I, thank you. Thank you, Beth. So, so sweet. Um, okay, so then I guess let's show my first finish, which is going to be my Blackbird Designs, My Dear Hearts. And I did do a bit of uh, alterations here. So I took off this bottom portion here and moved the border up uh, a row. Um, and I changed out, I didn't have the floss that was called for, let me show you. I didn't have the flosses in the cream. So I used the DMC conversion for that. And I used a different um, over dyed thread um, toffee for, I think it was called, called for bright leaf and I didn't have that. And then I used the called for over dyes in the green and the red. And let me see. Okay, so you can see how I moved it up. I just, I, it, there's a little bit more space here, but I don't know that I'm, I'm gonna fuss with that too much. I think it's fine. This is uh, my husband and me. And then Jane Austen, I changed the initials to represent uh, different uh, couples from the novel, some of the novels of Jane Austen. And so there are some oopsies on this. So this is 36 Count Ale by Picture This Plus. 
And I don't think from here you can tell, although maybe you can, but I did, I don't know where, I, I don't know where my brain was. I don't know what I was doing, where I was thinking. I'm trying to see which side it's on. I think it's on this side. So you'll see my antenna on that poor little butterfly. It's a little wonky. And if you look really closely, you'll see that I'm off one thread on that urn and the, the butterfly as well. I think I got off on the butterfly and so that carried over to the urn. Um, I'm not bothered enough to pull it out, to be honest. I think it looks fine. So I'm super happy with this. It's just another thrift store frame. I don't know that it will stay in this frame permanently. So that's, it's just literally just kind of loosely put in there for now. I did do, what did I do? So I did the uh, quilt, the, um, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank, fudge. Um, warm and natural, that's what it is. <laughs> I did do the warm and natural. And then I think I might've done a layer. No, nope, I think I just did the warm and natural. And then stretch the fabric. And that, like I said, I like to do that behind some of the warmer colored fabrics um, instead of the white foam core. So that's my first finish. And then we have, let's see if there was anything else. I think that was everything I wanted to share with you on that one. So then my next one, I have a few oopsies on this and I don't have a good picture of the completed design because it's, um, I did the PDF download, but this is whilst Iris Naps and uh, is the website that you go to. I shared this, we talked about this last time or the time before and it's Happy Piper. And if you'll see, there's a couple more rows on the top here that I had to leave off because I ran out of room and I, I changed this row right here from how it's charted. So let's see if you can see. So this is, I had more fabric, but for some reason I, when I, and I'm usually really, really careful about that, but I started too, um, too far up. And so I had to, do, I, so I had to take out a couple of the rows of stitching across the top to make it fit. A um, couple more things, let's see. So, okay, so remember I shared with you, this was my first time doing the four-sided stitch and how stitching with Reese, Reese love the four-sided stitch. It's not the four-sided stitch, it's the rice stitch. The rice stitch is one of Reese's favorite stitches. Sorry about that, Reese. But in my head, she kept me company while I did that four-sided stitch. And then I had forgotten, I'd also done these eyelet stitches the last time, the row of eyelet stitches. And I stitched those exactly how I was talking about. I stitched the bottom portion and then I came back and stitched the top portion. So I stitched half at a time. And okay, so then one of the other things that I made the mistake on this one was, you know, when you stitch a piece monogamously and you don't bounce from whip to whip. I think that, you know, Carol Saltbox Stitcher, hi Carol, has mentioned this. You know, you become very familiar with the symbols, the floss colors that are called for. Um, and I didn't stitch this that way. I, I came back to it after a while. And so the mistake I made was these red letters here, they're all called to be in this color here, which is uh, River Rock. And for some reason, the chart said River Rock. <laughs> And I went and looked, it, it wasn't on my floss ring, and I went and looked for red rock or red rocks, which is obviously red and not at all purple. And I had stitched the, I think I'd stitched all four of the letters down here before I recognized what I'd done. I really didn't feel like pulling them out. Not that that would have been too hard to do, but instead I just added them up here. I think I kind of switched things around a little bit. And I actually like the red, so, um, that, that's okay, but if you wanted to start to stitch this the way it's charted, those would all be more in the purples. And uh, let's see what else. Okay, so I posted this on Instagram and you guys were so encouraging and had such confidence in my ability to make it work even though I had messed up. So all, obviously all I did was just leave off a couple of rows and I have some options. Um, I've only just mounted this loosely, you know, I've just pinned it so that it's on the foam core. Um, for now, and this is what I did. So I did the warm and natural, then I did a layer of linen, and then I did um, the fabric on top of that. Um, but I have some options. I, I'm i thinking what I'm, I'm going to try to do with this. Now I got a chop saw for Christmas, which is um, it's a miter saw, um, an electric miter saw. And yes, I, it was one of the things I actually wanted for Christmas. Um, what I'm going to try to do is take an existing frame and see if I can't just alter it um, you know, adjust it and see if I can make that work. And then no harm, no foul. A lot of these frames I get from Goodwill are very, uh, inexpensive. And so 
That's, that's what I'm going to try first. And if I'm not successful, if that doesn't end up working, I have another option. So this is uh, a website or a, a site that my friend Daylene, hi Daylene, at So Grateful has talked about on her very most recent floss tube video. So she has a link to this company and uh, she had a couple of frames that she ordered through them and she was super pleased with uh, the whole process. Um, and she said that they came, she had measured very, very carefully. And when they came, she just popped her piece right into the frame and it was perfect. So that's another option. And, and again, it was uh, a for, it's just an affordable way to maybe get some, uh, a professional frame or a custom size frame. So that's something that I, I may do as well. Um, okay, so I think that's everything. I've been stitching a lot of eyelets and alphabets lately if you'll if you'll notice in the several things I'm sharing with you but uh one of the things about the eyelet stitching so uh when I talked about you know is it a thing is it a thing to stitch half and then the other half and yes apparently it is a thing and thank you to several of you who left comments on that video and so one of them was Tommy Jane from Instagram um she mentioned that that is the way she she stitches her eyelets is the half and then the other half and then Tam Savage, hi Tam, she mentioned that this was a method that she learned doing Ukrainian white work at, apparently it sounds like a class she took with Terry Bay's, oh, it was at a retreat that was hosted by Jean Farish. So that sounds very official. And I was so happy to see that, you know, like I said, I'm not crazy and who knows, I may have even seen it done. You know, like I said, I watch a lot of floss tube and I'm always watching to see how things are done. And I may have just seen it done and forgotten about it. And, and, and thank goodness it came back to mind when I was stitching mine. And then the other one was my friend, Annie. Hi, Annie, Annie B's folk art. She mentioned that um, this was something she learned in a class with Nicola Parkman. So yay, I felt, confident going forward because I, I did some more eyelids that way. Um, okay, so shall we share my, let's do my new start before we do my progress. So this is my new start uh, from this Blackbird Designs book, The Bells on Christmas Day. And I stitched this one here, which is, I, I believe that's what the this chart is actually called, The Bells on Christmas Day. And I think, let's see if you notice, I'm not sure if the picture here is even better. Let's see. Um, it looks about the same. You know, those leaves around the border, they look a lot more green. And even um, the leaves that are in here, um, it calls for Palomino, which let me see if you can, if you can see that at all. I don't have my glasses on, so I'm going to be struggling here. Goodness, good thing they're in alphabetical order. Okay, so it calls for Palomino. And Palomino is just, it's very brown. You know, it's, it doesn't have a lot of green. And some of the other colors that are used in that very same area, you know, piney woods, and then this other one here, what is that, tarnished gold. And so when you stitch all these, you know, together, along with, I don't even know what else is going on here, but some of these others, they're all very brown. And I don't think I want brown leaves. So let me show you, I had pulled out this one. I think this might be too green as an option, but let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you can see, I think this is 40 count, it might be 36, but it's vintage meadow rue. And if you can see, this, it just looks like overall like a lot of browns in here to me. Um, not a lot of, you know, it doesn't distinguish a whole lot there. This is the piney woods up here, um, but uh, the brown in the, in the palomino here. And the leaves around the edge are all called for that as well. And I just don't think I want brown leaves all around the edge. So I pulled chives, but I think that's way too bright um, when I looked at it. So I'm gonna try maybe endive or Oscar. I don't know, I just need a, a little bit more of a green leaf. If you've stitched this and you switched out, um, or if you stitched it in, in the Palomino and, it, and, it, and it's more of a brown tone, um, maybe just let me know so I can go and look. If you're on Instagram, maybe I can go and take a look. But I'd be curious, um, be curious to see. Okay, so um, that was my new start. Let me set that over there. And we're gonna do one more. So I've got progress on my Isabella Johnstone which is a needlework press. Again, this is just a um, black and white printout from the Antique Needlework Quarterly Sampler, Antique Needlework, Antique, that CD that I've shared with you several times. Uh, and so I printed this out from there, but you can get it as a standalone chart. As I said, it's a needlework press chart. And I am stitching this on 37 count corn tassel, which was chosen for me by Sherry at the Attic. 
um, along with a couple of the silks. Um, the green tea is in these out the leaves on the border here, and then um, there's a the Belsoi cranberry something. I, I talked a lot about the floss colors last time. And then there, I think this is a variegated floss as well here, um, but the rest is all DMC, I'm pretty sure. And I changed, so this flower right here is the DMC, and that's what's called for to stitch the alphabet up here. And I just thought, I, I won't see it. I mean, I just won't see it at all. And I know ghost alphabets are, you know, fine. And, and people, you know, makes you getting closer to enjoy the stitching. But I just think that that was just not going to show up well enough at all. And I went just a couple of shades darker on the DMC. I think it's 612 um, that I'm using for that. You can tell I haven't anchored. I told you I anchor my floss as I stitch over, you know, over these. They'll get anchored and, and I'll clip them off as I get closer. But, um, you know, Michelle at the Striped Rose has finished this. <laughs> and Laura, uh, Brenda and the Serial Starter. I think Laura just shared this on the last uh, Flosta video that they had up recently. But I am really, I, I added, so I've added this whole portion of the border. Um, I pulled this out a couple of days ago, I think, and stitched on it the last couple of days and um, got some of the border going across and all of this portion here. So, um, I think maybe I'll finish it next time I pull it out. Those are the eyelets I was talking about. So you can see I'm stitching half and then I came back and stitched the other half. There was one single stitch called for right there, which I did not do. I'll have to go back and fill that in. Um, but I, yeah, I, I love this one and I'm really looking forward to having that finished. Uh, I did find another frame for a piece I've shared with you more than once. So this is Lila's Studio, a Quaker welcome. And it was in a frame, I told you it was just propped in uh, temporarily, but this was a, another thrift store frame, very inexpensive. You know, I don't mind dings like this. I can easily put a little bit of gold um, touch up on that, but this makes them look old. And I'm really, really happy with that. So I pinned, I pinned that. Um, I did my new pins. I told you I shared uh, Jean Farish had that uh, finishing tutorial video and I bought the little sequin pins for that. I got the John James for the one over one stitching. These are the ones that I think Carol recommended. So I got some of those, um, some more peacemakers. I use all kinds of needles. I've mentioned that before, Pat Carson, peacemakers, Bowen. Um, I, I have quite a few. Um, okay, so let me take a quick Oh, so I think we can start about, talk about our, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, I think we can talk about our sale that's going to start here on February 14. Today is Thursday. Um, and so I'm all ready. I have most of the flosses. So we're going to do When Flowers Blossom by Brenda Gervais. So if you have this or you'd like to stitch along with us. So this is going to be hosted by Annie B's folk art. So that's Annie. Hi, Annie. And that's the hashtag, Friendship Blossom Sal, S-A-L. Um, I know that Nevada stitcher Barbara has mentioned that I'm, I'm hopeful she's going to stitch it with us. I think that she was on board. And um, I have chosen, I think this is the fabric I'm going to use. I have pulled out the flosses that I do have to get started. Um, so this is going to be 37 count Wild Honey by Legacy Linens. And that's what the flosses look like on there. So I think that's going to look really pretty. Super excited about that. Um, let's see. Gosh, I'm looking around and I think that's all the stitching. So the one uh, fun thing that we're, my husband and I are, have coming up, um, he's going to take us on a little road trip back to Phoenix to, uh, I'm sorry, to actually Mesa. Uh, Arizona, and I'm going to get to go to the attic and meet Amy, Mrs. Flossie, and give her uh, a hi in person. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I, so I'm not sure exactly how long it'll be before I come back. It might be uh, two, three weeks. Uh, I am going to share some, a couple of scriptures about agape love, God's love for us. But if you're not here for that, I guess we'll just say goodbye here, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. So um, for those of you who are staying with me, um, I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you for sharing the scriptures with me. Um, it's a real blessing in my life when I'm taking the time to prepare, you know, what I want to share with you. It, it's, you know, my time in my Bible, my time in prayer. Um, 
memory verses that are brought to mind or new ones that I would like to take the time to learn. And it's just, it's a real blessing. I, I have a, a quick, um, just a resource that was really helpful for me this time that when I was searching agape love, um, this gave me a lot of scriptures to be able to go and reference. And like I said, you know, that's just being able to spend even more time uh, recognizing all the ways in which God tells me how much he loves me, you know, through scripture and um, then shows me, you know, the kind of love that I'm to have for others. Um, so agape love, best example uh, of God's love for us is, you know, in the Bible is in uh, John 3.16 a memory verse for many of us. And if it is, I hope that you'll say it with me. So John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then the um, scripture that talks about best describes the agape love that we are to have one for another is uh, 1 Corinthians 13. And we're gonna do four through the beginning of eight. So love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Um, you know, agape love is different than the other kinds of love that the Bible talks about. You know, it's, it's different from uh, family love, you know, there's storge, it's not erotic love, it's not the uh, brotherly love. It's, you know, again, it's that love that God has for us. And, you know, our ability to have that agape love one for another comes from the power of the Holy Spirit. When we recognize that we are born sinners in need of a savior, when we uh, repent, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and savior, um, we are given that new nature and the Holy Spirit comes and indwells us. And that's how we are able to have the agape love one for another. And so I hope that you are able to take advantage of every opportunity that the Lord gives you every day to share that agape love with those around you. And I look forward to seeing you again soon.